Morning, guys. How's it going? Awesome job guessing. Awesome that we get the in here right away. Oh, you're, it's, 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 I got you, Sophia. Whatever, Mr. Loper, I <laughs> believe that I can get you next time. Oh, it is on like Donkey Kong. We're in Sean John in Bhutan. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to jump in your classroom and tell these other girls you need to be on my class at 8.15 on Thursday. Because they have not been showing up. Oh. 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 I've oh, been that. showing up. I'm not talking about the ones who have. I'm talking about the ones that are not. So I know, Miss Miss Johnson, I know a couple of them like chatted me during math class yesterday that said that when they tried clicking your link, it said they needed a password to get. So some, some of them simply couldn't access it, but I would be willing to bet there's more than a couple that just simply aren't going, would be my guess. Oh, this is not good. This is not a good sign for today. We're already losing sound. This is not good. All right, guys, I got 8.50. We're gonna go about one more minute before we're gonna get things started up here. What you need for today, notes from yesterday's exit ticket. Your lesson 19 packet, got a couple of grids and a couple of squares on it, rectangles actually, not squares. Um, and then some notes, to, some paper to write some notes down on. There's a quiz today. A lot of people still waiting in the waiting room. Not, for whatever reason, they're not connecting. I'm hoping that we don't have the same problem that we had yesterday. That was a little crazy at the end of the day. Miss Harris, are you still with me? Because like your camera on my end totally froze. What's up, Mr. G? Not this again. What's up, Mr. G? Mr. G? G? Class, bro. Present. Teach class. Wait, where he go? He died too. There's no, there's no more um homework or anything. Not as fun. Let's go. Get to work, guys. Write down your objective. No, duh. He writes it down. Nobody knows what it is. Yeah, I was gonna say how. Oh, Mr. Loper. It may Why be Mr. the host, Mr. Loper. Technically, you're still Mr. G. You're just Mr. Gnuich. Can I be a co-host today? No. Mr. Loper is here. No. Mr. Loper, you. Mr. Loper. Where's your sound? Mr. G. Mr. Loper. Class is gonna. Are you? Do you like to you the oh. ticket? Oh, wait, he's back. No, no, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. This says he's the host now. The same thing happened yesterday. Yeah. So, here we go. Let's get this fixed. All right. So it looks like we're having some connection issues at school again, but thankfully I bypassed it. Um by turning the hotspot on my phone on. So until I hear otherwise that the network here at school is better, at least you got me instead of Mr. Ganevok. Um, so yesterday we got a little weird. At the end of the day, we lost internet connection here at school. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because at this point we need to get rolling. Um, no, I don't wanna share my screen. I want to stop sharing my screen. Oh, okay. You're um, so yesterday we just simply lost internet connection here um, and we lost it right at the end of class. Um, so for me, it was like, 
we had about 10, 15 minutes to go. I was answering a question and then boop, just everybody fell off. Uh, downside to that, you guys missed out on some time to ask some questions in person of which I got two. You could still call me with a question of which I got one. Um, when I finished grading your exit ticket yesterday's, I had 30 missing. I still have 30 missing. And because of that, we will not be reviewing your exit ticket today. Um, so yeah, that's tough. It's, it is what it is. We got to get those assignments in. Even when like we lose connection, like the assignment hit, it got posted. I walked you through the first part of it. There's directions there. Guys, one of the biggest things that I'm seeing right now is that we're not reading directions. Let me share real quick one thing, just real fast. Let me turn my, cam my document camera on here real quick. On yesterday's exit ticket, I wrote up on the top. Granted, it looks a little bit different than this because I got a paper copy here. But on your digital copy, in yellow, highlighted right above all the words here, it said three things. It said, show me your work, find the scale factor, and determine the actual length of the surfboard. About half the people that turned it in gave me an answer of something like this. With no label. I don't know if three fourths is supposed to be your scale factor or the length of your surfboard, three fourths of what? What I need you guys to do moving forward on your exit tickets, I need you guys to think super specifically. Pretend like I'm an just really, really dumb. And I have no idea. I need you to explain everything to me. So you need to be super specific. I need to see names on papers. I need to see labels on answers. I need to see explanation. And it's super helpful if I see your work process because then I can say, yes, you actually understand every single bit of this. Or, oh, you got really close, but you just made a little, an error in, the, in, the, uh, in your calculations. So I need to be able to see your work. All right, so let me switch my camera off. Share the scores with you. I just need to switch on my end so we can share that. Hey, Greg, come on in. You come on in. The internet's acting up. I'm, I'm using my phone. Come in here. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go. Should share this screen. There we go. Exit ticket scores from yesterday. Um, now, if you notice up here, they're all blacked out, which is fine. I'm going to share those in a second. But right underneath it says topic quiz number one. That quiz is coming up at the end of class today. I'm going to walk you through a couple questions because there's a couple of them that are really confusing. Um, but then we're going to get to it. If you see here, double point challenge. I'm going to count your your quiz, I'm gonna grade it just like I would your exit ticket. We're gonna record this challenge and today's quiz is worth double points. So winning advisory will get two points for the win. If you've got your advisory with 60% or higher getting a three or better, there's another two points. And if you've got zero missing, meaning everyone turns in their quiz today, you've got the opportunity today to earn six points towards your total goal. All right, let's take a look. Yesterday's scores. I already told you that there's 30 missing, which means likely they're not going to be great. And they dropped pretty significantly. MLC gets the win, edging everybody out with a 1.96. So MLC gets the one and only point today for the win. So let's slide over, add it in. There you go, MLC. We're getting back into it. We've got to whittle away at that lead. Let guys double points today. So if you can get six points today, MLC, you're right back in this. WLC, you would take the lead. Actually, no, you'd be tied with Whitewater. Sorry, I'm the math teacher, right? I can do nine plus six. <laughs> That'd actually be 15. You would be in the lead. All right, here we go. We got that. Let's jump into devotion real quick. I'm looking around, I'm seeing people like Madison, like Lewis, like Judah, like Sophia, 
like Layla, like Jeremiah that I can see are up, looking great. Demarion looking good. Lorelai getting the stretch in. Kobe, got to fix the hood. Delasia, I need to – oh, there you are. You're in the corner. For a second. I got a lot of people who have cameras off right now. In Lavelle. Oh, Lavelle. You're, you're fine. You asked about that. You're good. Carl, Nicole, Nyla, Katrina, Lincoln. If you're having camera issues, you got to reach out to Mr. Eggers or Ms. Harris right away. You cannot wait. Mr. Hammond, your connection's bad or your mic is jacked up. Why don't you drop it in the chat for me? Thank you, sir. All right. I still got a mic on. I'm hearing some background feedback. There it goes. Thank you. Uh, nine plus six is 15, by the way. Nine plus three is 12, plus three more is 15. Break it down. There you go. Um, we are actually on, surprisingly, I, this went really fast for us. In this series of how to read the Bible, we are actually now on the very last video of this series. Um, so we'll jump, jump into something new starting next week. So this last one we're going to look at is called How to Read Apocalyptic Literature. Oh boy, end of the world. No, not really. It's not really what it means. So let me just switch my settings so that you can see and hear the video. Hopefully we got better connection here. Give me a thumbs up if you see a guy who looks scared with a purple background and there's a skeleton behind him. Ooh, it's almost spooky season. Josh is there. Thank you, Kiyosha. Lorelai's got it. Mr. Hammond's got it. Thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you, Brandon. Cool. All right, we're in the right spot. Here we go. It's the end of the world. The moon turns to blood. Mountains crumble. Mutant locusts swarm. These are just some of the strange images we find in parts of the Bible called apocalyptic. And while most people think the biblical word apocalypse means the end of the world, it actually doesn't mean that at all. So let's talk about how to read apocalyptic literature in the Bible. So wait, the apocalypse doesn't mean the end of the world? No. Apocalypse is a Greek word that means to uncover or reveal. An apocalypse is when you suddenly see the true nature of something that you couldn't see before. Because I don't always see things the way they really are. Right. We all develop familiar ways of seeing the world that can limit or blur our vision. So an apocalypse is like a revelation. Right. Now, in the Bible, an apocalypse is when God pulls back the curtain to show someone what's really going on in the world from a divine perspective. For example, take Isaiah the prophet. He's suddenly transported in a vision into God's throne room. Oh, right. He's in God's temple, described as a bridge between heaven and earth. And there, God gives him a divine perspective on Israel's past, present, and their future. So that Isaiah can bring challenge and comfort to God's people in his own day. Or think about the Apostle Paul, who was trying to stop the movement of Jesus, but then he gets stopped in his tracks by a vision of the risen Jesus himself. Yeah, he realizes that he's fighting against the very thing that he's been hoping for, and it changes the course of his life. So these apocalypses give people a heavenly perspective on their earthly situation, and they can give hope or they can challenge you. Or make you change everything. Now, those are biblical stories about people having an apocalypse. There are also whole sections of biblical books where a prophet describes extended apocalyptic dreams and visions. People call this apocalyptic literature. And reading these dreams and visions is difficult. I mean, they're filled with strange images. Like, let's take Daniel. He sees ferocious beasts coming up out of a dark sea, trampling people. And then a character called the Son of Man.
is exalted to rule the world. What is going on? Yeah, apocalyptic literature is written in a poetic by Bible that God tames and doesn't eliminate as he orders creation. And so the sea becomes an image of danger, death, and cosmic chaos. Ah, and the dry land, which comes out of the sea, is the safe ordered place where humans are supposed to rule as God's image. Yes, and also on the land are beasts. <laughs> that humans the humans are deceived by a beast. And start acting like violent beasts. Exactly. Now Sometimes a prophet will tell you what a symbol means. Guys, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Is this lagging really bad for you guys on your end? Thumbs up, yes it is. Thumbs down, no it's not. Thumbs up is, I can't, no. Yeah, thumbs is, I can see it. Sorry. Thumbs up is, yes, I can see and hear the video. Thumbs down is, no, I can't see it. Okay, I'm seeing a lot more thumbs down than anything else. What I will do um, is I will make sure we will, what I'll do is I'll share the link to this video. I'll post it with uh, the notes for today. Um, I'll put that up and we'll share that. That way you guys can watch it. It's really cool. Um, the, the visual on it is great. They did some really awesome artwork. Um, so I will share that separately. So let me do that. Let me stop sharing here. All right, so we are having, once again, some computer internet issues here at school. It just is what it is, unfortunately. So I'm trying to do a little finagling here. I'm trying to get up because I got Craig hanging out in the room with me here. Let's get this out of the way. And let's put this up here. Come on, move with me. Come on, camera. Come on, camera. Move with me. Well, I want my camera move. There it goes. Come on. There it goes. All right, CJ. There you go. Now you can see my dot cam. It'll be up on the screen up here. If it doesn't connect on my on your screen. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, Ms. Harris is actually going to run home real quick to get connected on, so she'll be back on in a couple of minutes. I see a lot of you. Your cameras are moving around, so that means that's that's good. I can see you. Hey guys, real quick, just want to address the, the issue that I'm seeing popping up here. When you're coming into class, um, make sure that your name is actually your name. There's a couple of you that have come in with some different names. We've got a couple of people trying to get into class here uh, right now. You're right, I'm not sharing my dot cam right now, so that's why. Um, but thank you for catching that. Um, I got a couple of people that are sitting in the waiting room right now with naming and all of a sudden you're not getting in yesterday we had somebody who sat there for 20 minutes didn't respond to anything um, simply because they, had, they didn't have a name that we recognized um, same thing's happening right now someone's trying to get in with the name and I can't I have no idea who it is you got to text me my phone number is in the syllabus um, some of you already have it some of you have already texted me some of you already called me um, so get on that, make that connection. Uh, whoever lovely Holly is, I have no idea. So they're just going to sit in the waiting room until they can reach out to us and say, hey, my name got changed and I need to be in class. All right, let's get to it. We've got a couple problems to get through before we get to our quiz today. Yep, there's a quiz today. We've been talking about it all week. If now you're just realizing it, oh boy, where have you been? Not paying attention is the answer. All right, I just got to move some things around here. I got to make sure my chat window is still up. Just shift it around. All right, everybody, real quick, show me that lesson 19 packet. Mine is up on the screen. Hold it up to your camera, just like Craig's doing right now. Thank you, Craig. Right on top of it. Brandon A is there. Jaden said. Judah said. Hold it up. I'm waiting for everybody. Hold it up. If you don't have your packet, just hold up a piece of paper where I can see that you're going to take your notes. So if you don't have your packet, I should see this. This is what I'm going to take my notes on today because I don't have that. Show me that package. Nice, Sophia. I love the, love the notebook. Thank you, Zania. Jaleja, I see it. Lorelai, yes. Thank you, Nia. Awesome. All right, here we go. Lesson 19. Yesterday, what we were talking about was we were trying to find actual lengths from a scale drawing. Today, we're going to take that same concept and add just a little bit more to the top. Today, we're putting the cherry on the top of that cupcake. 
Um, and if you ask Mr. Hammond, uh, mustard cupcakes actually aren't that bad. Um, inside joke from UW Whitewater people if you were there in advisory. Happy birthday, Jaden. All right, lesson 19. We've got a couple things I want to just make some notes on. Alex, 10 topics due tonight. About 20 of you have not even started yet. About 25 of you are already done, which is amazing. Love it. Don't forget, if you get more than 12, I started awarding extra credit. Brooklyn, I see you got a question. It's blurry. I can't see. It it's blurry. Video. Probably because I had something to tell. Uh, that's probably what it is. Oh, hang on. I hit stop share instead of sharing what I wanted. So hang on. Let me try it one more time. Where, yep, where that's what I did. I just I just forgot to turn off the uh, sharing for video instead of sharing for direct camera. That should be a little bit better. How does that work? Thumbs up if that's better. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Alex, 10 topics. Oops, got to spell it right. 10 topics due tonight by midnight. A lot of you are already done. There's a quiz today. We're going to go over that when we get done with a couple of practice problems to get you ready. There's a total of seven questions on that quiz. Um, so it should not take you very long. Some of them are really, really short. Um, areas, 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 areas. That's our objective today. Write it with me. Our objective today, once again, to identify scale factor. And if you remember my scale factor, it's my same thing as my unit rate. Yeah, I got some cool different colored pens. So now I'm gonna, now we're going to get all fancy. Well, and if different colored pens makes us all fancy, then look out, we're in trouble. The other objective today is given a scale drawing, find the actual area. Craig, can you close the door for me? Thanks, buddy. Given a scale drawing, find the actual area. Let me give you a second just to write those down. Looking to see if there's anybody that's got permission to be off camera. Hey, um, we just heard the internet is down. So yeah, right now, we did. To uh, they're gonna be I'm going to mute this for a second. Hang on. Just a short in-building announcement from Mr. Mandeville. Figured you guys, it was not super important uh, for you guys to hear all of that. Basically, our internet is down here in the building. Hopefully, it'll be back up uh, soon, but they're on their way to figure that part all out. Um, so yeah, so here we go. All right, um, scale factor today. We're gonna try to find the actual area. What do I know about area? Today, I'm gonna need to know about area. I need to know the area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle. Dig back into those beautiful wrinkly brains. How in the world do I find the area of a rectangle or a triangle? How do I find those things? What do I do? You need to drop it in the chat, give me a hand. Who's got it? Ooh, Brooklyn, love it. Which one can you tell me, triangle or rectangle? Um, I think you find um, uh, rectangle by. That's my equation that I use for finding rectangle. You got some friends that have already helped you out. They're dropping it in the chat as well. Yeah, length times width. Length times width is the area of my rectangle. I multiply those two dimensions together. I find out how big the inside of my rectangle is. What about my triangle? Think back. I know you guys have done this one before. Thanks, Travis. I'll let Mr. Mr. Eggers, Ms. Harris, Travis uh, can't turn his camera on, so. He's, he should be added to our list. Ooh, I see a couple people drop it in the chat. Who's got, who else has got triangle area? 
looking for some brave, bold hands. I'm seeing two people. Nailey, what do you got for me? Length times width divided by two or times one half. Yeah. Normally, yeah, we call it base times height because we're talking about a triangle. So I'm just going to use those terms, but they're the same kind of thing. Base times height is the same thing as length times width, but because we're in a triangle, we only have three sides. Base times height divided by two, or if you've done it, there's another way that, as Naley said, base times height times one half. Because if you multiply by one half, it's the same thing as divided by two. Wait a second. That's what we've been doing all first module here. Instead of dividing by something, we can multiply by the reciprocal. Holy smokes, it's everywhere. Awesome. <clears throat> Let's do this first one together. We're talking about taking a scale drawing, and now we're going to find the area. All right, so I need to look at my scale factor. So my scale factor, remember, is my image divided by my original. That's my scale factor, and it's still my K unit. So my original is the actual. I'm going to call that my O. My scale drawing is my image. That's the change. I need to take a pair of corresponding measurements and then do some division to find my unit rate. What pair of, in, of information am I going to divide? Am I going to divide like four and six or eight and three? What am I going to divide here? What rates, Craig, what am I going to divide? Four and three. Okay, why do you say four and three, Craig? Ah, well, in this case, I'm going to add to that. What we want to do is we want to compare these two together. So what I want to do is I want to take one measurement from my scale drawing and divide it by one measurement from my actual drawing. Yeah, a couple of people drop it in the chat. I want to pair up eight and four and three and six. If I were to make a table, it would look like this. Here's my actual. And here's my drawing. On my actual rectangle, I have a length of four units. On my drawing, I have a length of eight units. On my actual picture, the other side is three. And on my scale drawing, it's six. So I'm always going to compare the same measurement, but on the opposite image. So in this case, my actual is my X, my drawing is my Y, look at that. It's original divided by image. So let's do that. Eight divided by four, that's my scale factor. Can I reduce eight divided by four? Can I reduce eight divided by four? Drop it in the chat, what's eight divided by four? I should see this real quick, this is an easy one. Eight divided by four. I'm getting one answer repeat, there it is, now it's coming. Now it's coming. Yeah, this is two. My scale factor is two. This is an enlargement where my, my rectangle doubled in size. Okay, so now let's see. My actual area. How do I find my actual area? That's this area of this rectangle. We just wrote down our area formula. What is my area of this actual image? Guys, you guys are blowing up the chat today. I love it. Yeah. I got one answer in already. What is my area of my actual picture? Think back to that equation that we just did, length times width. Judah, what are we going to do? This is going to be 3 times 4 and then you get 12. So 3 times 4 equals 12, but I got to make sure I include the right label. Units squared because my area is two dimensions length and width so i don't just have one dimension so my units are squared here that tells me that i'm talking about area that's the giveaway craig lose the light. thank you what about my scale drawing area that's this one now that i know how to find this first one how big is that second rectangle how big is that second rectangle? <laughs> well, at least they're getting creative with the names. 
Not 18. Yeah, there it comes. Treasure, what's it going to be? Uh, never mind. I was going to say you could just do eight um, times six. Yep, that's exactly right. Eight times six. My area of my bigger rectangle is 48 square units. Now, here's the new thing we're doing today. Now what we're going to do that we've got our areas. Now we're going to compare the areas together. So I'm going to switch my pen here. I'm going to write my area in red here. So my area on this one was 12. My area on this one was 48. I'm going to do the exact same ratio comparison, but now we're going to compare the ratio between their areas. This sounds complicated. It's not. I'm going to do the exact same thing I've just been doing. The value of the ratio, that's what's K of my scale drawing area to the actual area. So that's my image area. So I'm going to write I sub A, meaning my image area, over my original area. It's the same thing. I'm just comparing now specific details. 48 divided by 12. What do I get when I divide 48 by 12? 48 divided by 12. That one might be a little bit trickier, but oh, here it comes. Yeah. Yeah, guys, love in the chat. You're blowing it up. It is four. Here's what I'm going to do. Circle number two and circle the number four. On a scale of one to five, how do you feel about this process? Oh, we're, we're doing the same thing. We're just kind of going through, and now we're adding one little wrinkle. We're, now we're going to compare the area. How do you feel? Five is, I think I can do one on my own. One is, I'm totally lost, and I need a little bit more help. I got a couple of fives. I got a, one more five. There's a, there's a four. There looks like a three. It looked like a 10 for a second, but that's it. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot. Ooh, that is a 10. Ooh, we got a 10, baby. All right, good. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to try the next two on your own. On your packet, there's one here. Example two is two more rectangles. And then I want you to jump to example three. There's two triangles. Now remember, area of my triangle is base times height divided by two. Or if you want to do it the way Danny said, same way, base times height times one half. Both ways are going to get you to the same answer. I want you to stop when you get done finding. So stop here. I'm going to set my timer for about three, maybe four minutes. I want you to get going on your own. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you to a breakout room and I want you to compare um, what your answers are. Compare your, have a conversation. Talk about what you're seeing because then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about what is linked here. So go ahead, here we go, my timer four. I'm gonna give you three minutes to start. And that's running now. If you got questions, fire them away. Oh, you know what? That's my fault, sorry guys. I thought they lagged out due to connection. Sophia, I see you got a question. I don't understand that last equation that you had the um the k equals i a and o a equals four. Ah, okay. My i a is the area of the image. My o a is the area of the original. All I'm doing is I'm creating new variables. I'm still doing my image divided by my original. I'm still doing K equals Y divided by X. The only thing that I'm changing here is I'm changing what the variables look like. I'm doing the exact same process. 
just adding a little bit extra detail to what I'm comparing. So yesterday we just compared two sides of our image and our original. I compared, let's say eight and four. So I was just comparing an image to an original side length. I'm just comparing a pair of sides. Today we're gonna to do that same thing, but now we're gonna compare everything that's inside to everything that's inside. So it's just getting a little deeper. It's the same process. We're still finding that ratio, but what we're doing now, instead of looking at just one unit, now we're looking at like a combined unit. So we found our areas, and today we're comparing our areas instead of where yesterday we were just comparing one measurement. So we're still technically comparing one measurement, but we had to find our area to do that. Got about a minute and 20 seconds to go. And then I'm going to send you out to those breakout rooms. Yep, got it. Yep. Yeah, stop right before. Here, I'll turn the page in case anybody needs to get the example three. Stop right underneath where you're finding the area for the triangle. So do example three, but don't go past that. Where it starts saying results, we're going to do that part together. But if you want to look at them, look ahead a little bit and see what we're going to talk about. All right, guys, got about 30 more seconds to go. I'm gonna open up those breakout rooms real quick. Uh, great question, Judah. The actual area was not four. The, the number four that we were looking at there from question one was just the four is the value of K when we're comparing the areas. So when we just compared the side lengths, our K value was two. But when we compare the areas, that K value was four. All right, there's my timer. Here can your breakout rooms. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to talk with your partners here. Um, talk it over, make sure you guys have matching answers, make sure you're agreeing on everything. Here, we're gonna come back, we're gonna discuss this. Here we go. Breakout rooms are open. Go ahead and click that link, join those rooms. Sophia, got another question? Mr. Loper, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, what, so the scale factor is the, the unit rate of both of the two, like the original and the uh, Yep, yep, scale, scale factor is unit rate. It's also constant, constant of proportionality. It's all those things. Promise, did you not get uh, an invite? Check on the bottom where it says breakout rooms. Okay. Mr. Lope. Tomorrow. Hey, Joelle, did you not get an invite? I did, but uh, my internet, well, I'm using the hotspot because my internet was not working. So Really That's what I'm doing too. Yeah, Joel, you should have a break. If you click on the bottom of your screen, there should be a like a menu bar that'll pop up. You can click on breakout room and say join breakout room. Okay. Mr. Loper, I think the connection with the school is back. So if you wanted to try it again. At this point, like I'm hesitant to switch in the middle of class without getting bounced. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. James, are you with us? Yeah. All right, you're live. Is your camera working there, buddy? No. 
No. Okay. Um, breakout rooms. We about a minute ago. You should have got an invite to join a breakout room. If you don't see that, you can look at the bottom of your screen. There's a little menu that should pop up. It'll say breakout rooms. You can join that. And he did. Look at that. He actually was alive and responded. He was awake this morning. First time I've heard his morning. voice, and it's week five. Did he just ah. talk to you? <laughs> we kicked him out. But That's fantastic. He did. I just heard his voice for the first time his, ever. His camera worked on Monday. Day. It did. I saw his face. Oh. oh. So. We are um, now. Oh, boy. His mom told me he's camera shy. And he. <laughs> and. <laughs> And um, I know they had huge internet problems last year, so I've just been kind of letting that one float float on by. But I can try again. How nice you got to hear his voice. Do you have a pretty full class? Um, we yeah, I, I want to say we were at like fifty three. Okay, yeah, that's but that close. includes the three of us. So that means we're missing about eight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We had a couple of people try coming in with different names, and I wasn't sure. Why don't let them in? Post Lamon or something. Yeah. Post Post Lamon and Holly. Like, look at the job. Holly, Holly. Um, to like the internet now. It's not horrible. It's a little laggy, but it's been it's getting better. Yeah. Okay. Just Garrett, check. I'm gonna bring him back. Bring him back, way back. Bring him back, bring him back. <laughs> Friday song. And Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody looking forward to the weekend. All right, and cut. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got about 10 more seconds till everybody's coming back. I got a few cameras that need to get turned back on. There we go. We got everybody back. Let me get this out of the way. All right, I need some helpers. I'm going to go to the Magical Cup of Destiny. Here it comes. Who can help me out? We need to find the scale factor of example two. Ooh, I'm seeing some hands. Love the participation. That's noted. I'm going to Mr. Emmanuel. Help me out. How do I find my scale factor for example two? E man, I know I saw you in here. Let's see if we can find you. You got some helpers that are looking, you got some friends that are looking to help bail you out. Uh, Ms. Harris, Mr. Eggers, nail thumb is okay for whatever reason. That's Sophia. I don't know how her her name got changed, but that's that's Sophia. Mr. Tolbert, can you help out Emmanuel? I don't know if he's with us. I can't tell if he's got a good connection. How do I find my scale factor for the example two? Um, you do six over two, and you divide it. Ah, you're so close, Amari. You're so close. Stay with me. Stay with me. My actual is my original, my scale is my image. So I'm gonna do the same thing, right? Image divided by original. What, am I, what order are my numbers gonna go into? You said six divided by two. I have to do what instead? Two divided by six. There we go, two divided by six. I can reduce two six down to one third. My scale factor for this one is one third. Can I confirm that visually? Yes, it's a reduction. My scale factor is less than one. All right, uh, actual area. How big is my actual picture rectangle? How big is this picture? How do I find that? 
Treasure, what am I going to do? You need to um, multiply. Yep. Well, you need to do 9 times 6, and it equals 54 units. 54 units squared. I'm going to write 54 big in the middle there. 54. Oop, I'm going to slide this up, get my cord out of the way. There we go. All right, what about my scale drawing? This little guy. Craig, how do I find that little guy? Six units squared. If you guys couldn't hear him, his answer was right on the money. Six units squared. Awesome. We're rocking and rolling. Now, here's my comparison of the area. My value of the ratio, that's my unit rate. That's my K. My scale drawing area, well, scale drawing is my image. That's my image area to the actual area. That's my original area. Look at that. Our variables are popping up everywhere. What is my value of the ratio? What is my K value for my areas when I compare these two? I got a couple people that put it in the chat. Brandon A, loving the hands today, guys. Keep it going. Brandon A, what do we do? Um, I got the answer, but I, I didn't put down what we do. What, like, okay, well, what, what, what answer did you get? I, get, I got nine. I did, uh, you got nine? Yeah. You got, did you do 54 divided by six? You're going to, yeah. all you need, you're, you're super close, Brandon. We just got to turn those numbers around because I want my image area to be on top and my actual area to be on the bottom. Six divided by 54. Brandon, instead of it being nine, it is one ninth. So close. You're right there. I love the effort. I love the attempt. All right. We got one more to check before we get to it. I'm going to turn the page. Ooh, triangles. Guess what? Different shape. It's still the same process. How do I find my scale factor? What is my scale factor for these two triangles? What am I going to do? What am I going to pair? Ooh, Mr. Hammond, let's see if that mic is working any better. You're going to put a, 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 you're gonna put a over X. Nice. My actuals, my original, my scales, my image. So I'm going to do image over original, which is 8 over 6. I can reduce that down to 4 thirds. I'm going to keep it as 4 thirds uh, for this experiment, for this example. We're going to keep it as 4 thirds. We could have changed it to 1 and 1 third. But for our comparison of what you're going to see what's going to happen here, I'm going to keep it at four thirds. I'm going to switch the pens. I'm going to put a box around four thirds. All right, actual area. What is the area of this triangle? How do I find it? Oh, I'm the hands today, guys. Same, like eight people are going crazy. Yes, there's some more. Gabe, how do I find the area of this triangle? You want to multiply? Oh, what am wait. I? You Area multiply triangle. nine times six, then divided by two. Nine times six divided by two. Now, guys, I'm going to show you a little shortcut trick. Okay, when you're doing when you're doing multiple steps like this, because you're doing both multiplication and division, it doesn't matter the order that you do them in. I could do nine times six divided by two, and get my answer. Or if I'm looking at my notes here, I could do something real easy. And I could say, wait a second. I know six divided by two. I know that in my head. That's super easy. Six divided by two is just three. Well, if I do three times nine, that gets me to 27. Let's see if this actually works. Let's see if Mr. Loper's actually making sense here. If I do nine times six, I get 54. 54 divided by 2, well, that's 27 units squared. Well, let's double check. 
Nine to six divided by two is three. What's nine times three? It's 27. Yeah, you can do it either way. It works both ways. So whatever like the little mental tricks that you've got to do to solve your problems, go and do them. They work great. All right, so I got my smaller triangle there. The actual one was 27 square units. What about this bigger one? What about my scale drawing? How big is the area for that? Who can help me with that one? Guys, keep that participation rolling. Brandon, you think you got it? Um, 12 times 8. Twelve times eight would get us the rectangle. You're super close. I got to do one more thing. Um, divided by. Um, divided by one. Not divided by one. Close. Divided by two. Yeah. Guys, when we're comparing area of a triangle, do you know why we divide it by two? Do you guys know why we divide it by two? Does anybody like explain to you why we like the area of a triangle by two? Sophia, do you know? No. No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Can I show you? We're gonna take thirty seconds. I've got my triangle here, right? This, we'll, we'll go with the blue one. My triangle. Let me grab my ruler just so I can get some nice bold lines here. I've got a triangle. Not like the song, like I got a pickle. I got a pickle. I got a pickle. I got a triangle. I got a triangle. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, there's my triangle. It's bolded in. My area is base times height divided by two. Yeah. Who dropped that in chat? Yeah, Nail, you're absolutely right. My triangle is half of a rectangle. Look at that. If I connect the other two points, it makes a rectangle. So I'm trying to find the area of my triangle. All I'm doing is I'm taking my length times my width, which would have given me the whole rectangle, but slicing it in half on a diagonal. That's, that's why we divide it by two. Well, 12 times eight divided by two. Those are some big numbers. I don't know that I can do those in my head, but if I can go, hmm, eight divided by two, well, that's four, four times 12. Yeah, I can do that in my head all day. That's 48 square units. All right, last one. We gotta be able to compare the ratios of the area. Yeah, Nail, you are dropping it. Mari, what am I gonna do? You repeat your oh, question. You gotta mute yourself, Mark. Yeah, I need to find my K value for my areas now. The, Im the area of my um, image and the area of my. What am I gonna do? Uh, forty-eight over twenty-seven. 48 over 27. Now that is a kind of a gross looking fraction. Would you agree with me? Yes, it's gross. No, I, I look at that and I'm like, yeah, it's a fun fraction. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, it's kind of, oh yeah, I'm seeing some, I'm seeing some stink faces. Yeah, that's a gross looking fraction. 48 27 Do you see any common terms between 48 and 27? Are there any common multiples of 48 and 27? Seeing some people thinking. They're thinking, they're thinking. Ooh, I'm seeing a handful of people off camera right now. Hopefully they talk to Mr. Eggers and Ms. Harris about what they're doing. Got a couple people laying down. Can't tell if they're with us or not. Because they're laying down, they could be asleep. That could be a problem. Don't get bounced out of class. You're missing good class. You're missing good notes. Guys, the common, ooh, Nailey, you got it? There you go, I see the wiggling fingers. What's my common term between 48 and 27? Ooh, Madison just dropped in the chat too. There's a common term here of three. Both can be divided by three. If I reduce them both by three, 
Oh, the internet's back up here. Awesome. Good thing my hotspot's still working. Yeah. We get 16 over 9. I'm just going to mute this for one second. All right, guys, one more long announcement from Mr. Mandeville. We're all good. We got it figured out. All right, so yeah, 16 ninths is going to be what I'm going to compare as the scale factor, the value of my ratio for my areas. That's my K value for 16 ninths. Oh, look at that, Madison. Look at you dropping some knowledge. All right, let's take a look. What did we notice? When my scale factor was two, what in the world was the value of my ratios of my areas? So when my scale factor on the first one, this is example one, when my scale factor was two, what was the value of my ratios of the area? Look back at your notes. Drop it in the chat. We can move much quicker that way. What was the what was the value of our ratios for the area? For example, one. Not seeing hands, guys. All you have to do is look back at page one of your notes. If you wrote it down, it's already there. All you gotta do is literally turn the page. All you gotta do. Brandon, I saw your hand. What was the what was my value of my areas for number one? I didn't raise my hand. Oh, you're just in one of these. Sorry. Looked like it. I'm sorry. What was the value of our areas from number one? Look back at page one. Amari, what was it, buddy? 12 and 48. 12 and 48. Yeah, those were our areas. What we're looking for is what was my K value? It was four. So let's write down four. Okay, for number two, our scale value when we just looked at the sides was one third. What about the areas? When we compared the areas, what was it? I thought I saw a hand. Brooklyn, what do you got? Oh, drop it in the chat as well. You guys are super fast there. I was just stretching. Okay, sorry about that. Ooh, thanks, Miana. Yeah, you got it. You beat out Judah just a little bit. One ninth. And this last one's right here on our page. When the side scale factor was four thirds, the ratio of the areas, well, we just wrote that down. It was 16 ninths. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting fast. What do you notice? I'm going from two to four. I'm going from one third to one ninth. I'm going from four thirds to 16 ninths. Be brave, be bold. Tell me what you see is going on here. What's happening? Jamarion, you think you got a guess? I can barely hear you. There, buddy. I was trying to figure out the answer, but I didn't oh, okay. get one yet. Okay. Look at our numbers. Look at our values. What is happening to our values? What's happening to our numbers? Well, think about this. What did we? What were we finding yesterday? What have we been finding so far everywhere? And then what are we doing differently today? Treasure, love the hand. Take a stab at it. What do you think is happening here? 
Go ahead, Treasure. Um, today we've been finding like our areas and our K values. So um, I think what's going on here is because the last question, as we can see, like when you wrote the um, K value was 16 ninth, and then it says it right here. Like, so I think the answer is like slowly going to the area or something like that. Yeah, it's got something to do with that area factor here. Love how you're thinking. You're getting there. Write this, guys, with me. The ratio value, and I'm going to put in parentheses K, of the areas is our scale factor. So again, but this is my scale factor is K for a pair of sides. multiplied by itself. Or, if you guys have talked about this before, it's a process called squaring, so it's, it's itself squared. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. The ratio value, our K of the areas, is our scale factor multiplied by itself. Well, let's see if that's right. What's two times two? Well, that's four. One third, what I have to do is I have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by themselves. So it would be one third times one third. Well, one times one is one and three times three is nine. Okay, so that checks out. Two times two checked out. Let's try this last one. Let's see if that's what's going on here. Four thirds times four thirds. We just multiply straight across. Four times four, 16. Three times three is nine. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So if our scale factor of the sides is R, they're just giving it a, a, a different variable. Normally we've been calling this K. The ratio of the areas, we're gonna keep going with R here is r squared. So I'm going to take my ratio and square it. Sounds like an easy process. And it actually kind of is. It's not difficult. Mr. Questions before we move on. I have Sophie. a question. Yep. That did not make like the last part, the one, two, and three. Like I, so I did something different, but like it's kind of hard to explain how I did it, but it was wrong, and okay. I don't. It just didn't doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay, so let, let me jump back a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna jump back. And I'll come back. All right, so on our first one here, I'm just gonna mute you so I don't get a little, I'm getting some feedback on my end, so don't worry. So on this first one, when we compared just our sides, when I compared eight and four, my unit rate was two. Notice how I'm saying unit rate and it says scale factor here. It's the same thing. My scale factor of two is telling me that this side length went from four units to eight units, which means my side length doubled. It grew by two times. That's my scale factor. Now what we did was we said, okay, what about the scale factor of my areas? Well, now I need to find the area of my whole shape. That's why I do length times width. Well, let's think about this. If my width multiplies by two, so this is times two. My height also multiplies by two. These two are also times two. In order to get from three to six, I also have to multiply it by two. So now, instead of just having one dimension doubling, I have a second dimension doubling. So now I have a growth of two times a growth of two. 
if I look at this and I zoom in a little bit, here's another way to look at this. I can take my actual picture and lay it down inside my scale drawing. One, two, four, one, two, three. My actual would be right here. But if you notice, I could put four of them inside of it. Wait a second. That's the value of my ratio of my areas. There's a connection here. What's happening is we're not just comparing one scale factor. What we're doing, we're finding the value of the ratio of our areas. We're comparing two scale factors at the same time. And what we have to do is we have to multiply those together. So in this case, we didn't just grow by two in one dimension. We grew by two in two different dimensions. So that's why our scale factor went from two to four. Same thing happened in example two, but we shrunk. We went from a big rectangle to a small rectangle. Now we could do the exact same thing. I could put my small one inside of here. Oh, it would actually be there because that's six units. If I draw this out, there would be nine little rectangles inside of here. One, two, three, right there. Boom, 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 boom. I could fit nine of those in there. Well, that fits perfectly. There's our scale factors, or our scale factor, the area is one ninth because my area here is one out of nine sections. See how that is equal to that? That's what we're doing. Instead of now just comparing one inch to six feet, now we're comparing 54 square feet to six square feet. So the complication of today that we're adding to this is now we're gonna look at area. So it's that was a two dimensional measurement instead of just a one dimensional measurement. Does that help clear it up a little bit, Sylvia? Um, a little bit, but it's been way harder. Like I know how to find the scale factor, but it's been super hard. Like I can't, I haven't really been able to find the scale, like the scale factor like on these problems. And I did something different, but like it didn't make any sense. And then, and the, I don't know, I'm just very confused about kind of the whole thing. Here's what I'll tell you. I'm not if you talk, if you're with, if you're like Sophia right now, Sophia's being super brave and bold and putting it out there. She's saying, you know what? I, I still not, I'm not fully getting this. If you're feeling the same way, come see me at 245. Ask whatever questions you need to ask, and I will walk you through step by step everything you need to know. Sound good? Yeah, give me a thumbs up if that sounds good to you. No one else can see you right now. I, I'm the only one that can see you, so you're good. So if you're feeling if you're feeling in some sort of way, you're like, man, I'm still stuck. Guys, we got a test coming up on Wednesday. If you're still stuck, let's get unstuck. We got some time. All right. Um, we are actually for today running out of time. We were gonna do one more thing where we we're gonna take this example from yesterday and use our new equations that we just did right here and see if we could find out our actual area of our basketball court. We did that yesterday technically where we could do that um, another way. So what I wanna do is I wanna shift gears. If you notice, I just have some loose leaf paper out right now. That's totally fine. That's where I'm going. We're gonna to go to our quiz next. But what I wanna do is I wanna share one thing with you before we get to our quiz. Don't go into your quiz yet. I wanna show you something here. I wanna switch my camera over, but I need my controls. There they are. Okay. I'm gonna go into our Google Classroom page. You should do the same thing right now. Go to your Google Classroom page. What I want you to do is I want you to click on the button that says Classwork. When you click on the button that says Classwork, you're gonna scroll down a little bit. And normally where our daily exit tickets are posted, once mine loads, there it goes. Oh, look at that. In case you missed it, in case you haven't looked, I post the video of all of our daily class recordings right here. So let's say you're like, oh man, I missed the note on page three from Tuesday. 
Well, you can go to Tuesday, you can click on this, and there's a link to my YouTube video from class. It's the whole class recording, all hour and a half of it. So if you need to like, hey, you know what? I need to find this, I need this note, you can find that, it's all right there. Today's exit ticket, oh, it's for me, it just needs to refresh. There is a page of notes for your topic quiz. There is a Google document I want you to fill out today. I'm going to count this as a bonus exit ticket grade. Why? Because I want to see your work. I want to see your process. Once this loads up, you're going to notice name, date, college. I need that filled out. I will not take this late. It needs to be turned in when your quiz is done and your quiz is due by three o'clock today. So if you don't finish by the end of the class, that's fine. You've got some time. You've got until three o'clock. There will be no extensions given on the quiz. So don't call me and tell me like, hey, at nine o'clock, like, hey, I still need to finish my quiz. You, you don't have it. You have to talk to me well before three o'clock. Question seven, if you scroll down, question seven is extra credit. I'm gonna say that one more time. Question seven is extra credit. It's not gonna be something that you've seen yet necessarily unless you're working ahead on Alex. Now, when I get back up here, questions one and two are worded really tricky. I'm gonna stop sharing my camera because hopefully you guys are already on this page. Ooh, there we go. Now, everybody listen up. Questions one and two are worded funny okay so write it this with me i'm gonna write this down i'm gonna share it uh, i'm actually gonna turn my camera on so you can see it i'm gonna write down exactly what you guys need to see here okay question one and two on your quiz today question one and two now you can go into alex you can log into alex right now click on assignments it should pop up automatically topic quiz number one it is live as of right now so you should be able to get there. If it's not showing up, you just might need to refresh your page. Okay, the quiz is on Alex. It should be there. Your, the thing that's on Google Classroom is your bonus notes. They're gonna get two separate grades. The quiz is one grade, your bonus notes is a separate grade. If you don't do the notes, you just don't get the points. Questions one and two are gonna talk about ratio comparisons. but the wording is really weird compared to what we've been doing in class. So I'm gonna make a note, watch the wording. Because they're going to say something like this. Something is compared to the blank. Uh, apples to the oranges, um, bricks to the boards. They're comparing two different things. When they're saying the this, to the this, they're putting it in a different order than we've talked about in class. They're gonna specifically say the first thing before the to the is your y value, the thing after is your x value. I'm gonna tell you that because we've always said that x and y on my table, my x goes on my left. I'm gonna tell you today that Alex does not follow that rule. So don't think about that today. Alex decided, nah, we're going to do whatever we want. So one of them, it might be Y on the left, X on the right. And the other one, it might be X on the left, Y on the right. It's going to be totally dependent. You got to watch the wording today. So you have to read closely. Total of six questions that we've gone over in the last about seven class days are what your quiz is covering today. Question seven is extra credit. It's actually going to be like things that we're going to be doing in module two starting next week. Once you're done with your quiz, you can hit submit. Then send me your note page. On your note page, type in anything and everything that you needed to do to solve that answer. What's nice too is at the end of your quiz, you can review your answers. You only get one shot at it. So take your best guess, take your best work, do everything that you know how to do. I'm gonna turn off my camera. 
the rest of the time is yours. It is 10.03, class ends at 20. Uh, the note page should already be posted in the Google Classroom page, let me look. Yeah, it should be posted. You might just need to refresh, you might just need to refresh your classwork page. Oh guys, I'm sorry, I told you the wrong time. It's due at 3.30, not three o'clock, 3.30. The rest of the time is yours. If you've got questions about the Alex questions, drop them in the chat for me, uh, because here's what happens. Alex actually makes five different versions of the quiz. So Jaden's question might be totally different than Lewis's question, even though they're both working on question two. And Nayali might even have a different question. So there's five different versions, depending on which one you're on. I'm not specifically sure. So when you, if you have a question, here's what I need you to tell me which question it is and what is your question. I'm working on question three. Can you explain blank? Then I can look through and I can check. Other thing while I got you, while you're here, while you're focused, while you're listening. On Monday, we're going to actually have a pretty fun in-class project to do on Monday with Monday's lesson. But what I need you guys to do is I'm going to be creating a short tutorial video to walk you through a website that we're going to be using in class on Monday. I'm going to create that today. I will post it on the Google Classroom page. It'll be a video right on my YouTube channel. I want you to watch that and play with the settings, I want you to go in, I want you to try the website out. It's really fun. You're gonna have, you basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna design a floor plan. You're going to design your ideal classroom. You're the teacher, you get to decide what the classroom looks like. You're gonna design a scale replica of that on Monday. I'm gonna create a video today and share that. What I want you to do over the weekend, take 10, 15 minutes, watch the video, play with the website a little bit. That way on Monday when you come to class, you'll know exactly what to do. Madison, absolutely. If you want to do that, yeah, guys. If you, instead of if you don't want to use the Google document for your notes, go ahead and take a. You can do them on a separate page. Take a picture of them, and go ahead and, and just attach it to the Google assignment. That's that's a totally yeah. That's totally fine. You can you can do that any day that you want. I will never tell you no on that. Can we start the quiz? Absolutely, yeah, go right ahead. The quiz should be up and running. So yeah, log in to Alex, get into that quiz. Mr. Loper? Yes, Ms. Sophia. Um, where, oh, where is it gonna be with? Where's the link to the um, that uh, that site that you were talking about? I haven't posted it yet. I'm gonna post it later today. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm glad that you were paying attention and listening, though. Glad. That Thank you for confirming that. Yeah, Judith. So what you have to do is you have to look at the wording. For questions one and two, you have to look at what they're asking you, what they're comparing. Um, you're going to be looking at different questions. So let me just get in here quick um, and kind of look at it as an, at an example and see like what I can specifically tell you, um, like without giving any. That quiz is open. It's open until 3.30 today. So you got to get it done before 3.30. Otherwise, any question that you don't answer, will automatically be a zero. All right, so like question one, I'm calling up an example here, showing up on my screen. So Craig's in here with me. He can confirm visually that I'm, what I'm reading to you is actually what shows up if you really need confirmation. All right, so here's, here's a question, example question number one. It says, the table below gives the dimensions of a skull scale model. Find the scale factor of the model to the real sculpture. 
So model to the sculpture. Remember I said on our notes, they're gonna say Y to X. So in this case, I'm gonna walk you through like how to get to it. You're gonna do model is gonna be my Y variable. Sculpture is my X variable. Now you guys might not have a question that talks about a model and a sculpture. It might be like a model boat and a scale drawing or something like that. There, again, there's five questions. I can show another one, let's see. You have to pay really close attention to the wording. Yeah, here's another one. It's the same model and a sculpture. Show another. Drawing to the statue. So same thing. You got to pay attention to the order of the wording. So if it has drawing to statue, they're doing Y to X. Not the number two, the direction to. I'm comparing Y to X. The help? No. If I'm looking at my table, now I can associate which variable goes with which item is in my comparison. Now I can find my scale factor. Now I can find my unit rate. It's normally my unit rate, yeah. My constant. I know that there's a problem here. Lavelle. Drop your note and drop your question in the chat. Tell me which question and then what is your question? Absolutely, Sunia. Totally use your notes. Totally use your notes. All right, question five. Yeah, question five, if I remember right. You sure, you sure question five? My question five is showing graphs. Oh, question four. Question four, you're drawing a rectangle. <clears throat> On question four, what they're going to do is they're going to give you, here is your original image. They're going to give you a rectangle. They're going to give you a scale. It's going to tell you what the scale is for your original. Now what you need to do is you need to look at what is the comparison. How did my scale change? Okay. So on question four, what you need to do is you need to use your drawing tools. There's like a pencil or a line or like a ruler you can use to draw. And you need to draw the new rectangle based on the, the shift change of the, the, the scale factors. Sorry. So how did the scale factors change? Did they go up? Did they go down? And if they went up or they went down, by how much? No, oh, nail. still stuck on the first one. Okay. Um, question one and question two are the same type of question. So if you're stuck on one, question two is going to be the same way. Um, here we go. I got another one here. Um, scale, mo scale. There's a dimensions of a bridge and a scale model of the bridge. Question says, find the scale factor of the model to the bridge. Okay. So now, if I'm looking at that, I can look at my, I can look at my table, and I know because Mr. Loper told me that Alex puts them in the order variable y to the variable x. So now I can go in and look at my table and I can say, okay, my model is my Y variable. My bridge is my X variable. Now I can use that information to help me solve my unit rate, my scale factor, my constant, my constant of proportionality, my good buddy K. They're all the same thing. They're all the same thing. We could say that our friend K has an identity crisis because he's got five different names.
Awesome. Love it. Thanks for the notes, guys. Love that the explanations are helping you. Now, if you're done with your quiz and you've turned in your notes, you do have some extra time before ELA starts. You can use the rest of this time as a break. You, don't, you do not have to sit here if you're done with your quiz and you've submitted your notes. So if you're done, that's totally fine. I'll see you later. I'm not sure why I have so many cameras turned off at the moment, though, because you're still in class. That means those cameras need to be on. Hey, Sophia. Um. I have a question for number four. And so, like, wouldn't it change? I mean, like, wouldn't it, like, not change, like, uh... So, you know, you're, they're giving you one rectangle to start, and they're saying, here's my scale for this rectangle. Now what they're saying is, on this new one, I want you to draw a new one, but they're telling you that the scale is changing. So on one example that I saw, the scale that I had on my first triangle was every one square was two centimeters. But over here, my scale is now every one square is oh, six be... centimeters. Wait, so maybe yeah, so you're, what you're doing. Wait. They're not gonna be, they're not gonna be exactly the same. They're gonna be a little bit different because the scale is going to be different. So the picture that you're going to make is either going to be bigger or smaller, depending on how that scale has changed. Uh, question three, let me see. Guys, I'm looking at our little, I, so I get a report with everybody's score on it. And I'm looking right now and I'm seeing about 20 people that I see in class right now that are not logged into their quiz. I'm really confused as to why. Well, for a couple people, I know the reason why. And those two, like those three people specifically, like you haven't logged into Alex yet this year, which is a major problem. because you're not doing your, your topics each week, you haven't completed your mid-module test, that, that's a major problem. I'm confused as to why we're not using class time to do class work. Uh, quizzes due by 3.30 today. Make sure that all those questions are answered by 3.30. Now, um, like I see a couple of people are already done and they've already left and that's totally fine. Um, I see a couple people like, oh my gosh, my score is super low. Yeah, don't worry about your score because I go back in and regrade it. Alex grades it on its own scale. That is not what we use in class. So don't worry about the grade. If you see it and it's like, oh man, I got a 14%. No, you actually didn't. I go back in and regrade everything. So just make sure that it gets done before 3.30. Question three, Mr. Spicer. I love how you're dropping it in the chat, even though you're about 15 feet away from me. All right, let me get let me get to see what question three looks like. Guys, we've got about three more minutes. If you've got any other questions, drop them in the chat quick. Otherwise, I'm gonna be ending this meeting in about three minutes. Your quizzes are due by 3.30. Question three. Using scale drawing to find actual area. That is just exactly what we did today. So here, here's this one. This Is this the question you have? No, let me see if I can find it. It said that you need to simplify in question one. Yeah, it probably just means if you put in a fraction that you can probably reduce it. Uh, Brandon A, that is the hope and plan. The hope and plan is that we will be back in the building on November 2nd, as long as everything else goes the way that it's supposed to be going. Is that it? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so it, like, it could be any one of these, right? It, so it could be just like this one. There's a line of patio. Let's see if we can find one more. Yeah, um, you, for a couple of questions on there, guys, you've been asked about equal sign. You don't need to put equal sign, just put the answer directly in. Okay. Uh, scale drawing, question three, if you're stuck in that. The scale drawing for an apartment is shown below. In the drawing, three centimeters represents four meters. That's my scale. Every three centimeters on my drawing represents four meters in real life. Now, assuming that the bedroom is rectangular, if I'm looking at the picture, my bedroom is in a rectangle. Find the area of the real bedrooms. What I need to do is I need to look at my drawing here. And this says my bedroom is three, the drawing of my bedroom is three centimeters by six centimeters. That's just my bedroom. What I want to find is what is the area in real life. So what I need to do is I need to apply this scale to these measurements. So if I know that every three centimeters on my drawing is four meters in real life, I can figure out this real length. And then I can figure out this real length. And if I know my length and my width, now I can find my area. Okay, that's actually what I'm talking about right now. Uh, question three. Oh, you mean four? Let me get to four. And looking at the time, you're going to be my last question here, Gabe. All right, question four. Um, you're going to redraw, you're going to draw in that new rectangle. So there's some drawing tools that are given to you. Um, on the side. They're going to give you a current scale. That's your original. Um, and they're going to show you that that scale. So the one that I'm looking at, it might be the same as yours, it might not be. It says my scale is one unit, so one box is three feet. And then down underneath it tells me that the length of one box is three feet. Now it's saying I need to draw a new box, but this time my scale has shifted where now one box six feet. So I need to think, is my new picture going to be bigger or smaller? How did my scale change? When I figure that part out, when I look at my new image compared to my original and I look at that change, now I can go in and I can draw my new rectangle. So there's some drawing tools there. There's a pen put down on the points, you can draw a line across to wherever it needs to go, and snap it in. It doesn't matter where it goes in that grid that they give you, but just what you're doing is you're drawing that rectangle with the new scale. Okay, does that help? Go ahead, you, you can unmute yourself. No, okay, here, let me do this. Let me, let me share my screen and you can see what I'm seeing. And it might be your question and it might be a different question. Yeah, but it, they're going to be very similar. Okay. So this is question four. Give me a thumbs up if you see a rectangle and empty grid on your screen. Yeah, Craig's got it. Okay, perfect. So here's my current, this is, so this is one of the questions. I don't know which one it is. You might have one just like it, it might be a little bit different. They've given me this rectangle and they're telling me that every one of these sections, every one of these units is three feet. So I could count these up and I could say there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight boxes here. So now I can figure out, okay, there's eight boxes. Every box is three feet. I could figure out this line. Don't, don't say it. If you know it, don't say it. But now I just counted up, there's eight boxes. Well, every box is three feet. I can figure out how long this length is supposed to be. Perfect, I got that length in my head. Now I need to go over here. I'm gonna draw the same length, but now with this scale. So now how many boxes is it going to take for me to draw in the rectangle with the same length? I'm gonna do that with the height too. I'm gonna to go, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I got six boxes high. Each box is three feet. I can do some math in my head. Okay, now I know how tall this box is gonna be. 
how many boxes over here do I need to draw to get the exact same height? Does that help you? So you just draw that, that box on the other side? Yep, draw me a rectangle in that other box that is going to be the same size, but because our scale is different, I'm not necessarily, I'm not drawing this box. I'm gonna draw another rectangle that with my scale has the same dimensions. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, I got 1024. If you've got more questions, you can email them to me or you can come by uh, our office hour section at 245. Remember the quiz is due by 330. Absolutely, Judah, if you wanna take a picture of your notes, you can attach it to the document. If you're done, you guys are rock stars. Thank you so much. I will see you guys either at office hours or I'll see you on Monday. Watch for that video. Have a great weekend, guys. Hang on, where are my controls?